Hey, it's your boy Serge Dragon, and welcome to another edition of the Heaven's Monsters podcast. With me always is your boy King Money, King of Puppies. There you go. All right, so today, uh, this week we'll be featuring. I'm trying to remember when what was my Monday. November 26th. November 26th and the 27th of November. Edition of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. So let's get to it. Starting off with Monday Night Raw. Baron Corbin alongside Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and his hype man, Leo Rush, make the statement after taking out Braun Strowman one week prior. They made it perfectly clear. If Braun Strowman's shattered arm does not heal within the time of December 16th at TLC, and he is not there to compete, then he will automatically forfeit by the rule of general ma- uh, sub- substitute ge- acting general manager of Monday Night Raw, Baron Corbin. That's just him abusing power. Mm-hmm. That's just him being a heel manager. In which case, he's already stated that if you're not with him, you're against him, and there's going to be hell to pay after TLC. Hell, there's hell to pay right now. Mm-hmm. He put Elias, who interrupted that little announcement, to make fun of everybody in that ring, including, again, Leo Rush. <clears throat> Telling that we got a child pointing at his butt. Yeah, he had a good song this time around. I gotta admit, I'm actually wanting to see his songs now. Mm-hmm. Only to see how he makes fun of people. Otherwise, it's just him talking about himself, like, kill it. But at Bobby Lashley and uh, Leo Rush's expense, hey, come on, let's go. <laughs> For those who don't know, that's a Fonz uh, tribute right there. That's a Fonz mean. Okay, moving on to that was the match between Bobby Lashley and Elias. Ultimately, with the outside interference of Baron Corbin changing the rules, because apparently he says he was supposed to be a no disqualification. If that was the case, why did the match start on a regular rules? Abusing that power all yes, that night. All, all that night he was abusing his power. Mm-hmm. Really just cranking that abusive to 11. He's just trying to make some man proud. That's what it is. Hmm. Hmm. In which case, thanks to that out, uh, outside interference of the acting Jedi manager, mm-hmm. Elias ended up losing to Bobby Lashley. I guess we can skip a few things because later on that night, mm-hmm. Finn Balor is supposed to fight yeah. Baron Corbin by selective choice. With Baron Corbin, I went out of the end. And then when he was uh, losing, he didn't even let the match finish. He just said, uh, I, I'm changing the stipulation. It's going to be a two on one handicap match. And then Drew McIntyre comes in there and just dominates a already worn out Finn Balor. He put up a fight against the two, but Drew McIntyre was just too, too fresh. Mm-hmm. And got the win for Baron Corbin, proving his loyalty to him. And if that wasn't bad enough, Bobby Lashley comes out and deals even more damage. And all three of them just jump Finn Balor and... Nobody comes to the rescue because Elias was taken out earlier. Uh, Bre- Braun Strowman's uh, in operation in another city that they were in last. And that's it. nobody wants to cross Baron Corbin right now. Even a, a freaking, uh, what's her name? Alexa Bliss was kissing up to him and was named uh, Boss. I don't know what was the term to use, but uh, boss of the women's division. So she took it out on Bailey and 
uh, Sasha Banks. Put them in a match, if I'm remember correctly, with the Samoans. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that in just a bit. So Elias, and that was already done. Lucha House Party versus the Revival. Ooh, and this I liked that match a lot again. Yeah, because they were chewing them out saying, you talk about this and that, you talk, it's so unfair that you go and make it three on two. You got to be an R's. You got to be an R. Tag the division. And then it was announced that it was going to be under Lucha House Party rules. So it was a three against two match. Uh -huh. And even, and this was on commentary, Corey Graves says he asked Baron Corbin, why would you allow such a thing? And he said, I have no control over this. This was over my head. So he is, uh, 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 Renee Young said, so see, he, there's, he's not in complete control. There's uh -huh. people over his head. He's talking about uh, the Ambrose? Baron Corbin. Okay. Next. Next one. Yeah. We're going to see if it mentioned them. AOP, Arthur Pain versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. <clears throat> A match that would decide if they would be the new Raw Tag Team Champions prior to the win the week before. Sadly, that didn't work so well. When the interference of, uh, what was his name? Drake Maverick. Drake Maverick. See, I'm trying to remember his name. I know him as Spud, okay? Rock, yeah, Rockstar Spud. I know him as Spud. I'm trying to get his name. Drake Maverick took the $10,000 expense robe that Bobby... Bobby Roode wears, takes it to the restroom, tries it on, and then shoves it down the toilet and pisses on it and then flushes. Well, he walks away and flushes. So that meant the arena Bobby had automatic Roode. toilets. Bobby Roode was so angry. Enough for him to be distracted enough for the author of the pain to get the drop on him and finish him. But just imagine if that was Untaker's jacket. Uh, 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 or hat. Yeah. I mean, Kane's you know. mask. Uh, yeah, if he took it, if he took, if he took it off. Triple the H's game. leather jacket, Stone Cold's beard. Yeah, or yeah. Uh, or, or don't forget about his uh, four, his four. The Rock sunglasses. He was known for his sunglasses. Yeah, well, yeah. He don't like nobody touching sunglasses. Well, I didn't like people, Stone Cold didn't like touching his uh, four wheeler. True on that. <laughs> but he don't always bring that to out. Yeah. I know. Next. No tag teams. New tag teams have yet, so now we gotta have a new set of tag teams to go up against the Authors of Pain for Monday Night Raw. Let's see who's up to bat. Okay. Ember Moon versus Alicia Fox. <coughs> Excuse me. That was weird. Mm -hmm. Prior to the mixed match challenge, these two would be going head to head. And sadly, being her former partner, being out of commission. Mm -hmm. She is just another victim of Baron Corbin's grudge. Mm -hmm. So the new partner she's teamed up with for the Mixed Match Chat Tag Team Challenge for Monday Night Raw would be the losing streak over 200 losses, Kurt Hawkins. In which case, why? If he's supposed to make the Raw Tag Team better, why did he put... He, he did that out of spite. I'll save that for after, if we do that in the next video or not. Next, uh, I, I, of course, at least uh, Ember Moon won that match. Kurt Hawkins made us uh, look like he won the match, celebrating like hell. Ah, yeah, and after that, no, wait, Jose, no, wait, Jose, no, wait, no, Jose. He's been uh, kept out, uh, out of uh, action. For a while. Man. That we know of on main television. He probably has matches in the ones that are not main TV. Mm -hmm. Like ones that show up on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and whatever. Mm -hmm. What not. He hasn't gained any airtime on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> okay. That's got text. That's fine. But in the end, it was... Uh, he would fight. Who was he fighting? Jinder Mahal right after that. The Mahande Maharaja. And he ain't getting no Maharaja. He's supposed to be a king. He ain't no king. He's a stepping stool. Mm -hmm. 
But nonetheless, I will say he did get the win. Good on you, Jinda. Been a while. Next. Dolph Ziggler versus Seth freaking Rollins in an open title match. Mm -hmm. And Dolph Ziggler step up to the plate. And they were saying on commentary that that's how Dolph Ziggler won his title against Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. Not this time. In the famous words of Fala Ba, Ba, no, no, no. But did you see uh, uh, um, the, he still has Dean Ambrose in his mind? Yep. And you saw how uh, you saw how Renee Young's face, how Michael Cole, and, well, and Corey Graves are asking her question about Dean Ambrose. She was um, mad. Again. Yeah. Again. Because she was like, you expect me to give you all these answers, but I just don't know. I can't honestly tell you what is going through his mind. He doesn't talk to me. Yeah, but Corey That's Graves. That's what she said. Yes. But Corey Graves. Uh, Mike Cole might believe, but Corey Graves don't. I'm just pissed that he mentioned that, though. I, I, I recorded this. I haven't uploaded on the Tumblr because of my busy-ass work schedule. I'm hoping to do that tonight. And, uh, and Dean Ambrose was getting all freaking shots and everything. One here, one here for all different things. And the next one was rabies. And it was because he's talking about... Uh, Coming to Houston, no, 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 no. What the city he was in before, uh, at that night? Uh, not Miami. Yeah. Not Mississippi. Start with an M. What is it? Start with an M. 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 Mm. Minneapolis. Yeah. Well, I think it was. But he was saying that they had all sorts of diseases, and he's getting the rabies shots for when he comes to Houston, Texas, because of all the freaking <laughs> the diseases. We got what the. Restaurants. Huh? Fuck you! Fuck you, Dean Ambrose. Fuck you, we as Estonians, man. Come on. Fuck you. And, uh, Minneapolis, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, Corey Graves is going to ask, and Mike Cole is going to be asking Renee Young questions about the Ambrose again and again. Uh, and again! Yeah. And she yeah, is, that's. Uh, some truth on what you were saying about Matt Hardy not being in the ring. He's doing some background stories. Yeah, because he said he's, uh, in the video, he's announced he's retired Boo -hoo. from wrestling. No more. Boo -hoo. We like the Woken, yeah. Broken, whatever named. Woken. Genius. We like it. <laughs> but you never that, was know. A good, that was a good uh, gimmick. But here's the thing. You never know if WWE Money and Raw decides to do like a add to our anniversary celebration. You, I'm not saying you will, but it's, you could see the Hardy Boys reunion. They didn't finish up the Halloween special either. Yeah. I was thinking they were going to have a Thanksgiving rescue or something like that. But now it's Christmas time coming. So hopefully somebody rescues the hurricane. In the famous words of the hurricane, or what's his actual name? Uh, Sh Shane Helms. Gregory Shane Helms. In the famous words of not rescuing him. Stand back. No, no, other one. What? What's up with that? What's up with that? There you go. <laughs> yeah, you had to click. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> what's up with that, man? Come on. Save the hurricane. He's a that's classic. Your, that's, your, that's your childhood... Uh, childhood uh, best friend, Matt. Y'all know each other since the y'all arrested coming off Omega. I like that one where he was still in TNA Impact and he went into the Lake Reincarnation. He was started boogieing now. <laughs> I love it. Because uh, Matt, Matt Hardy, you told you told him and Shan more about what what, Lita, what, what, uh, Lita, what happened between you and Lita. Well, let's not get sidetracked. This is yeah. not a homage I'll, 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 to I'll, Matt Hardy. We need to make, do an homage to yeah, Matt Hardy and yeah, such shit. Yeah. And anyway, next on the list, uh, what was it? I'm trying to guess. No, my, my Finn Balor versus Barry Corbin. We already talked about that. I think that's what ended the show. Yes, yeah, it did. Yeah. Oh, and did you see the size of that motherfucking needle that Dean Ambrose had going up his butt cheek? Yep. His butt cheek. Not not butthole. Don't get it twisted. But cheek. Cheek. Yeah. There's a meme going around about the Transformers movie where the they uh, the guy from two fat uh, from the Fast and Furious films. Yeah. 
He says, Rep, left cheek, left cheek, left cheek, left cheek. <laughs> like, what the hell? Yes, Who's I, replaying that shit? Left cheek, I, left cheek, left cheek. I, 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 I just want to see what, what <laughs> I just want to see what they say about to Renee Young again. She's gonna be rolling her eyes about this talking about the Dean Ambrose like that. Yeah, she's gonna be saying, "Why are y'all attacking me about Dean Ambrose?" That's not right. Okay, we got the fifteen minute mark, so let's head it on to SmackDown. The Blue Brand. This is so funny. And I'll say this much: I'll go ahead and mention this. It was funny how they did that backstage, and the Usos said that they won their tag team match, which is true, and the Miz. Mention what I said last time, and I know everybody mentioned it, uh, that it was the Usos that won. The New Day got eliminated just like Shane and The Miz did. In which case, at the end of it, it was sad, sad, sad to hear that there's an actual thing called the Marinis. The followers of the films of the Marine. Mm -hmm. I only watched the first two. I haven't started watching the others. And now there's yeah, six so, of them. You know, there's one of them is with, uh, yeah, 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 that, that yeah. one, that one is, you know, the one with John Cena and another the second one. Ted DiBiase Jr.? Yeah. That was the only two I saw. I haven't seen three, four, five, and now six. Mm -hmm. Because it's a Miz. I'm really not tempted. Yeah. I watched the Santa's Little Helper. That was funny because of Paige. I I, that was funny. I, oh, yeah. I At watched, his expense, that was funny. I watched the, uh, Jingle All the Way, too, with, uh, Santino. That one I did not see. I'm hoping this, they show air that yeah. this year. Santino Marello. Mm. And I saw the one, uh, Knuckle, uh, Knuckle Up, Knuckle Up, I think it was called Knuckle Up, but, uh, The Big Show. Knucklehead. Knucklehead, where is it? Yeah, Knucklehead. Yeah, I haven't seen that one either. I want to see it. There's a lot of films I want to look. I got to look them up to see what they got. But otherwise, it was a shock to hear. And Kofi and Xavier Woods call, uh, called it, Big E is a Marini. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, 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 ah. trying to go off screen like I am, but I'm going to fall off this chair. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, what, what kicked off SmackDown for sure, though? Age is in the ring. Ah, yes. To make the fact known that Becky Lynch is clear. Mm -hmm. Becky's clear. The, uh, mm -hmm. And I forgot the name of the t-shirt again. The man. The man. Uh, no, this is, uh, the t-shirt that's been uh, commercialized. Uh, straight last or something like that with the gears on it and it's mm -hmm. an orange shirt. Damn. Straight last. Relentless. Relentless or something like that. You mean straight, uh, straight, uh, <clears throat> straight fire. Straight fire. So they say straight fire, but I've gone straight hellfire. And it's going to be basically two heels fighting each other. Yeah. Until, because Paige did mention that she has not seen that much determination to be the women's champion in a long time. And all the other roster of women, which was a total of nine, if not including the two women in the ring. Mm -hmm. So we only got 11 women. That's it. Mm -hmm. On SmackDown? Yeah. Oh, okay. Any which way? All the women made their claim that they wanted to prove themselves. And Paige, I thought it was going to be Charlotte versus all nine of them mm -hmm. in a battle royale to see who would be the actual number one contender. But no, but she, she twisted it even more but, than I hoped but, for. But see, but... but. If you're a SmackDown general manager, you don't want your uh, competitor fighting because you want her to be 100% better. True. But then she added a third to make it a triple threat match. Even more so, the officially, we are going to have a first time ever TLC. And I confirmed this because I haven't seen it in NXT as far as the women's division. They had a ladder match. They had a tables match. Never all three. So this is going to be good. Look at my it's eyes. Like Look at my time. eyes. I'm happy. <laughs> well, it's not exactly the first ever TLC. With the, all, with the women? No. They, they said it, but it's not really. Because the one who did that, the original one who did that was... Uh, Leah? Yeah. And, and, no, uh, China. See, I didn't know that. 
I did not know that. But in this day and age, in this era, this is going to be good. I think I can spoil it. In that match, it was grueling, but all nine of those women test themselves beyond anything. His girl got was the fourth to be last eliminated. Then they, uh, Naomi, and then it was down to Sonia Deville and Asuka. And they literally, literally were tooth and nail trying not to fall out outside the ring. And it was Asuka for the win. Ah, my pick. My pick. Yeah, my pick. And she's going to be my pick because it's going to be a triple threat TLC match for the women's championship match. Watch, that go, That match is going to steal the show. Mm-hmm. Watch. Yeah, and my pick is Asuka. Out of Becky, Asuka, and Flair, it's Asuka for me. What about you? Mm, I think I would, uh, Becky Lynch. Uh-huh. He's going but, but with it, us. It, it, Straight it, fire. But it depends. It, if you get, if people get into it, more people get into it. Yeah. This is going to be good in general. But see, these women are not just here to press the fans. They had to mo- they had to press the higher up. That is Vince McMahon. Do it again. They had to, these women. They don't just they don't they're not worried about, they're not worried about pressing the fans. They just want to impress the higher up, Vince McMahon. Good to see you. Man. That said, let's move on to the list. We covered that, so we can skip that. But Vince McMahon, he still is not impressed by NXT. The fans are. Yeah, some fans. We don't see people screaming oh. out NXT. Well, I mean, uh, but, WWE. Here's, here's, WWE. Here's, here's the thing, bro. I read some of the fans what they said about NXT. They said that it doesn't impress them. Some don't. don't like <laughs> some them. don't. Uh, tell that to the fans who are screaming their heads off. They just talk about, they just, like, it's, they say that uh, watching stuff like that, it just takes more, some fans away from uh, wrestling. Because ain't what it used to be back in the day. Yeah. Next on the list. Usos versus the bar. Usos versus the bar. It was a non open title match, in which case they wanted a challenge. So they wanted somebody to fight, not for the titles, like I said, non title match. But before that match, they ended up getting, well, Cesaro mainly, ended up getting a little picky with Big Show because of last week's Thanksgiving <laughs> brawl match. She, uh, she, Cesaro got so much food on his face that it was ridiculous. While Big Show was knocked out, he goes and pulls on his strap mm-hmm. and points and points. And it's, it's like, what the hell are you doing? You're poking the bear. Who, who, You're who, poking who, the bear. Who's, who, who's, like, uh, and he got. Big Show, knock him out. Yep. Remember, he used to be a bear. He has a bear icon for some reason. Well, yeah, that's, he didn't have, he didn't have a symbol like, like Hong Kong the Rock and Twitch did. Yeah, but the bear was a good emblem for him. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, they decided to give him They should keep it. They should keep it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. They should keep the bear uh, logo. But otherwise, uh, in that match, the Usos accepted the challenge and gave the uh, the Big Show list, mm-hmm. meaning Big Show is no longer with the bar associated with them. So now, it was thanks to him that one of the guys said it was thanks to the big show that the bar became the new tag team champions once again. So now we'll see if they were able to, and they didn't. The Usos got the drop on the bar and raised it. See <laughs> what I did there? Next match. <laughs> Talking chicken, not turkey. AJ Styles makes his way to the ring. Yeah, after what Daniel Bryan said, and he was in a uh, Starcade. Uh, they showed that on Sundays. Check out Starcade. It's nothing really. Well, actually, it's pretty good. I gotta say, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's like it's, it's just something I know. It's WCW's original pay per view. WCW. Don't get mixed up with WWF or WWE. World Championship Wrestling. Mm-hmm. That company went uh, war with WWE in the Monday Night Wars. Yeah, those were the good old days. Mm-hmm. They need to do that again. But see, the ratings won. The ratings. WCW won the rating for, first, right, first. Then WWE won the second time. Mm. All right. AJ Styles said his piece and he's going to fight. Uh, 
Daniel Bryan, but there was no idea of the stipulation match. Is it going to be just a regular match? I so. Hope not. It's Make it something. It's TLC. Come on. Table, ladder, chair, all three. Come on. It depends on Daniel Bryan trying to use a weapon. Uh, we'll have to see. We still got like two week, three, two weeks, so we'll see. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev for a number one contenderships match. But right straight out of the gate, before the bell even rang, Shinsuke is beating the living hell out of Rusev. Goes for a knee shot right on the back of the head. Uh, from what I understand. The match wasn't even official. Rusev ended up losing. That sucks. It's a funny thing. He always asked for uh, uh, to be in a heavyweight top top pitcher. That he changed to top pitcher, even though you had to get you had to get that level. You have to have fans like you. Mm. So next on the list, we're in the twenty-six minute mark. Samoa Joe talks about uh, he and Ruffs, uh Jeff Hardy's celebration. Oh. 20th year anniversary for Jeff Hardy, and we got to see a clip of some of his best moments, and it just makes us love Jeff Hardy all over again. Mm -hmm. He is one of my favorites. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I gotta make it. I got to make the top ten list for myself again. Mm -hmm. You already know my top three: Taker, Stone Cold, and Cena. But my after favorite. that is Iffy. Mine is, is The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H. You know, uh, none of the other classics. Oh, uh, they are classic, bro. No, I meant classic, classic. Oh, you mean like eighties? Oh, past uh, that. Uh, let's see. I had to go with uh, the ones that Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah. you uh, you got because I for say for sure. Now that I know he's not a myth, he is a legend. Uh -huh. Bruno San Martino is going to be on my list for right. one of the main main classics the for mi sure. Then the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Yeah, I don't know where he's going to place. So I got to look at that and see which one I like more. Because he is an Italian. Same with me. And Sting. And uh, next. Because, uh, oh yeah, yeah, we did, I didn't finish. Uh, we didn't finish. You didn't say your piece. I didn't say my piece. Okay. But with, with what was happening in the ring celebrating Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe interrupts the celebration to say his piece. And you could see Paige and Shane McMahon didn't like that. But yeah. Jeff Hardy said, say what you want to say. Because, like, you saw Shane, man, he was like, what are you doing, man? I'm going to be doing that here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But you know for a fact, yeah. Jeff Hardy isn't afraid. He knows he has his demons. He knows he has demons in the past that he might have to deal with still. Mm -hmm. He's not afraid of that. His fans know him. Mm -hmm. So right. he wants the fans to know. And he's thankful that he's got uh, some more chances to come to come back mm -hmm. to do what he loves doing to yeah, so don't be surprised Samoa Joe and Jeff Hardy fight at TLC. But you know that was a low blow when he yeah. says the uh, pop same champagne bottles, but he can't even have that because of his alcohol problems oh, but back did you, then. Did you know who, who he, you know, Samoa Joe is the only one that brought that up on Jeff Hardy. Mm. MVP did that. No, I meant on SmackDown. Yeah, I'm talking about that's what MVP did on SmackDown 10 years ago. And MVP had that's Jeff right. Hardy as his guest on his show, VIP Lounge. And we brought Jeff Hardy's past and the loss of his dog, Jack. Oh, and that's the, right. And his house burning down. I watched that. That was messed up. And, the, and his, Jeff Hardy's house burning down. Well, I'll say this much. Uh, honoring our boy, Xavier, MVP is one of his favorites all, all time. So mm -hmm. say that none at least. Our boy, Xavier Hill and Mike Henry, link to their videos will be in the descriptions down below, as always. Mm -hmm. Next on the list. What is it? Oh, what is it? Shit. There goes my iPod. I'm charging it. I was jamming while working. What time is it? Kofi Kingston with... Kofi Kingston versus... Wait. Oh, that's a hype that he's a guy in the corner. Okay. This is the maze. Yep. Prior to what I said before, with uh, Big, Sh Big E being a, a Marini... <laughs> The Miz claimed that he could beat any one of them. So Kofi Kingston stepped up to the plate. And oddly enough, mm -hmm. he was expecting Shane to be in his corner. The Miz, I mean. 
but he wasn't. He's like, he's like, I'm not having any of that. So, but in that match, Kofi Kingston and Big E did have his back when they were making sure that Miz didn't have any of his shenanigans, like bringing in a chair. Xavier Woods got that out of there, giving the chance for Kofi Kingston to get the win. Mm-hmm. Fair and square. In the back, Miz looks at Shane McMahon and feels like they're parents to the the best in the world cup. Mm-hmm. Even mentioning negligence towards the cup and just smudges on it. And try having him hold it like a baby. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what Christian did to Edge is when Edge won the about the Royal Rumble in two thousand and one, Christian did the same thing to Edge's uh, trophy, holding like it was a baby. <laughs> and shining it. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Edge is like, Why are you what are you doing? He said, I'm holding it for you like a like it's a baby. Why? Because, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know, Edge had, was Intercontinental Champion at the time, so he had to hold his belt. And Christian wanted something to hold, so he decided to hold Edge's trophy, or Rumble trophy. 31 minute mark. What was next? It, also, I want to mention uh, Xavier Woods did say that Kofi Kingston it will be a future world champion. And he said, I said it, I said it. But how is that going to work with uh, the New Day? Okay, Randy Orton showcases the mask of Rey Mysterio, and Rey Mysterio comes out to try and fight, but he's wearing a neck brace, and he gets brutally beaten, but still fights to the bitter end. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shane McMahon, the Miz, nine women match, I already mentioned that. Asuka would be the one, and the show ultimately ends. Well, that said, ladies and gentlemen, we hit the 23 minute, uh, the 32 minute mark, so we gotta end this video. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll finish up anything less in the next video coming up next. So, as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit, get a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button if you like the content. And hit that notification bell so you can get notified for the next Heaven's Monsters podcast. Till then, peace out. Bye.